The Improving Access to Psychological Therapies programme was rolled out in 2008. It's a uh, government initiative and it is countrywide. So that if you go anywhere in England, you will find an IAP service of some sort. So they all look quite different, but actually they have to have three characteristics to be an IAP service. One of them is, is they offer evidence-based psychological therapies, which is the, the push and the reason why it's been created. Um, we are the most outcome measured mental health service there has ever been. So we are run on access and recovery data and um, we collect that at every appointment. Um, and that has its upsides and its downsides. So it's very good because we can see if we're performing and we're doing what we've been commissioned to do, but sometimes patients don't always fit in a box. So sometimes it can be challenging with that. We also have um, regular and outcome focused supervision. We're a very supervised service. That's because we're very fast paced, high volume. We want to make sure patients are safe. And we also want to make sure our workers are safe because they're working with lots and lots of people back to back. So there's a lot of supervision involved in IAT. One of the reasons we've come to talk to you is that our our old referral process was very paper-based, so to be able to come and see an IAP worker, you would have to go and see a health professional first, which would mean that you'd need to make a GP appointment, which you know how difficult that could be. You'd need to speak to a GP. They would then need to write a referral. That referral would then go geographically to the area of the IAP service that they were from, and then it would be screened, and a letter would go out to the patient asking them to book an appointment. So it was quite a long process. Um, and the only treatment options at that time we were offering were face-to-face -face in a GP surgery, and perhaps a little bit of telephone work if somebody couldn't make it. So giving you some a little bit of history about who are the people that are working in the practices. Um, they're generally an IAP to your um, people are trained as psychological wellbeing practitioners. What that means is they've done a postgraduate certificate in psychological therapies um, and then they offer nice guidance, evidence-based interventions that have been taught. Um, company again, this was only offered face to face or over the telephone. Um, which wasn't suitable for everybody. Um, and you were offered up to about six sessions of guided self-help um, based on cognitive behavioural therapy, which I put in there because I think it's quite important. We don't, at that level, we don't do see pure CBT. It's guided self-help, looking at interventions, coaching, um, and encouraging somebody to get to recovery. We do have CBT therapists within IAT, but they're another step up, so it would be more for somebody who was not recovering at that level. So, um, and things are changing, which is what we're here for, and I'll pass it to Sophie. And we were recruited to help improve this so, uh, referral process and access, and also increase the variety of treatments available to clients within the service. Um, so currently, the main part of my role involves doing telephone triage assessments, and in that, it's a 30 minute conversation with someone where we do risk assessments and also find out what's going on for them at the moment, what their current problem is, their primary problem, see whether we're suitable or refer them to the right person. Um, and the main idea that this being psychology informed is that it helps to streamline that process between assessment and then appropriate treatment. Um, in terms of increasing the variety of treatments available, we've also all been trained on Silver Cloud, which is a computerised CBT programme, which provides a different flexible option for clients to get an access to therapy, um, and they can do that from home or at any time they like, as so they don't have to attend the clinics. We've also been working with other members of the team to start running some groups for depression and anxiety. They start this month, so we're hoping that they're going to go well and we can continue and expand them. Um, so it's been a change because we've had this new role that's never been part of I am before, um, but we've all come together and put our experience in different disciplines together to improve the service and keep meeting targets. What we have had so far is part of the innovation. We are moving towards a service within a service model. Basically, we, are, we want to have our own referral pathway. Uh, that means to say um, we have our own referral forms and on our forms we improvise and innovate to make sure that our GPs are encouraged to self-refer. Since the service uh, started, we have seen um, that uh, starting to an increase or basically starting to increase the self-referrals from the paper referrals. Um, we hope by setting up the website where we hope uh, clients will be able to self-refer, the self-referrals will increase. I think the challenge for the service right now is to work with the GPs who are used to writing something down and in their mind they feel safe that they have made a paper referral and they can basically trace it. And to get that mind frame changed, we are trying to, we have to market ourselves very much so and educate them about how our service is like. And um, as the GPs also hold the, well, they are the commissioners, they have been set a target of 16.8% and uh, that's the access target, by the way. 
uh, in April we were eating about 9.25%. Um, and by the end of June, we hit about, about 16.84%. So there was, there has been an increase. Uh, to maintain that, we hope to continue working as a service within a service type of framework. And uh, we are recruiting more staff within the hub and within the service itself to ensure that the telephone triage system is more seamless and ensures that all the clients who come in our service are safe, safely managed. And the service responds to their needs. Any questions? Can I ask a bit more about your outcome focus supervision? What what you do? We have a system called IAPTUS, which is an IAPT note taking system that a, is a government recommended one, so they can pull notes stuff off it. So we have a, a framework with on that, within that that you can request supervision. But we actually, it, it's a bit different in the hub because I supervise the assistant psychologists and we supervise daily. So they will triage and that, that will be supervision. So they would come in, they'd talk about a case, we'd make a joint decision about what they wanted to do with that person and then pass them on. But we also have clinical skills supervision as well where they can bring cases and talk about different things or we have people um, do a specific subject so if you've had a lot of birth trauma for example comes through then we'll do a clinical skills supervision set on birth trauma so it's quite fl I'd say it's quite fluid do you think yeah. it works? Yeah yeah no it's good it's, and in terms of it being outcome focused I, I guess it's because each session they have to complete scales um, and then it's looking at how we can help them them. But yeah, it happens. Got yeah, but we have supervision daily and lots of different types of supervision um, just to make sure we're all doing the best job. Mm. Works quite well. Yeah, and it, it's very much as well because it's in one place. If there is a problem or something comes up, is that you've got somebody there instantly. So it's, it, in the surgeries, it's more remote, but we're in one room. So I think that helps a lot. Lovely. <laughs>